What radio, the music you want. With your host, he's Dan. Shall we shag now or shall we shag later? What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous. It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services in the Arkansas area or maybe even the surrounding areas, I encourage you to go to djlittlerock.com, check availability, get a free price quote, and you might have me entertaining at your party, your event. Today on the program, it's an Instagram model. Yeah, it's a small picture. Uh, it's a, a small box that I've painted her in, but uh, I'm sure she's so much more. It, she's an, a model in england and her instagram i mean you can just go to it right now while you're uh listening to her chit chat with me and uh, i'm excited i'm excited to learn more uh love sunflower 3011 go check it out and um i'm i'm stoked i i, I saw her online and and i i sent out a, a message if she'd like to be on the what makes you famous podcast and she said yes and i said all right so we're, t- we're talking to a model today uh, so this, uh, well, I guess I need to talk about this week's shows, uh, tonight it's Thursday. I'll be at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas doing the video dance party, karaoke jam. So come out and dance and have some fun tonight. If you're listening to this, as soon as I post it or, uh, tomorrow night, if you missed your chance tonight, uh, Friday nights, I'll be at the Rab again. That's right. Full bar kitchens, open pool tournament going on. So, uh, yeah, spend two nights with yours truly at the Rab. And then Saturday, I have a wedding. Ooh, I'm so excited. These are people that I used to play with in, in Cabot when I did a karaoke show down there. And uh, their family members are getting married. Yay! I'm excited. Wedding season. Without further ado, let's uh, let's have a chit-chat with uh, Love Sunflower 3011. And she's uh, she's out there in England. I'm going to hopefully find out where in England. Let's uh, let's give her a Skype call. Uh, Skyping Love Sunflower 3011 now. Hello. Can you hear me? I do. I hear you. Love Sunflowers 3011. That's me. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Thank you very much. Uh, (laughs) Here we are. We got it together. You just got off work. You had a busy day. I have no idea what to call you. Uh, Sunflower is fine by me. That's what everyone else calls me. That sounds great. Sunflower. So you had a busy day. What did you do all day long? All day long, <laughs> well, actually, I do have a day job, but it's my day off of that job, um, so I spent most of the day doing some online work. Some of uh, some what work? Some of my online work. Online work? So, so what kind of work do you yeah, do online? i promoting my OnlyFans page, <laughs> excuse me, mostly, um, making content for various pages. I've got a few things going on at the moment. So, so yeah, it's just it's constantly promoting and advertising it all. So what would be your title? Uh, okay, you say you have a, d- a day job. What would be your title on your on your Instagram page? What what do you call yourself? Wow, I wouldn't even know. <laughs> um, adult entertainer, I oh. guess, would be diplomatic thing to call it. I suppose. All right. And how did you how did you get into this? Um, It actually started out, believe it or not, as a joke. One of my friends said, oh, you know, maybe you should try this OnlyFans that everyone's raving about. It's a really good way to make money. And it was just a joke because normally when I go out with my friends, I like to wear revealing clothes. Um, It's what I'm known for. And we were just joking about it. But I looked into it and I thought, hey, I can do this. (laughs) And I don't know, it just blew up overnight. I made the Instagram I added photos and all of a sudden all these people were following me and I was sending out this link 
and gradually it just it got more explicit I had a couple of friends that were sort of encouraging me saying yeah you've got this you can do this and yeah overnight it literally blew up out of nowhere so I was really lucky well mission accomplished sunflower <laughs> so at a at a young <laughs> age did you find yourself um uh, very e- extroverted uh, or were you an introvert growing up um I used to be an introvert as a teenager and a child. Um, I was very shy. I wasn't very confident. Um, I was quiet. But then overnight, it must have been in my early 20s, overnight something just changed. And all of a sudden, that was it. There's no shutting me off. <laughs> I'm loud. Uh, I've got the loudest laugh that you've ever heard. And something's really funny. I go for it. And yeah, I'm just, I love being, that sounds so narcissistic, but I love being the center of attention when you walk into a room. And yeah, it's just like a, a switch flipped overnight inside of me. And all of a sudden, you know, I feel lively and, you know, I love being the soul of the party. Well, I can see that, Sunflower. You seem very happy, a very bubbly person. But in your 20s, what what, what do you think was the trigger? What made the switch uh, from being a shy person to a a not so shy person um as sad as it sounds i think it was the breakdown of a serious relationship that actually did it for me which it's it's a sad story but you know after that relationship broke down i decided "Mm, this is it i don't want to be this quiet you know unconfident meek person anymore i want to go you know into the world and be myself i want to be confident i want people to think you know i'm a nice person and, you know, it just makes me feel better being confident and happy. And if I can make other people feel that way, that's even better. Huh. All right, Miss Sunflower, did you have a lot of friends as a child? Um, I did. However, my family, we moved around a lot around the country. Um, I changed schools a fair few times. I've lived in the north, in the south, in the Midlands. So it was, it was difficult sometimes keeping long-term friendships. But luckily... As an adult, I've stuck in the same area for a few years now, and I have absolutely incredible friends, amazing friends. They're all really supportive of what I do as well. Well, that's very good, Sunflower. It's nice to have friends that that love you and and a good support system. Uh, So you grew up in, well, you're obviously obviously in the UK, England. Uh, I'm not familiar with the geography, but you say you were born in what part of England? I was born in the north, in Newcastle. Newcastle. All right. And is that a nice place to grow up? Or, or you say you moved around. Uh, why did why did you move around? I guess the parents had uh, jobs that, that made them move? Yeah, I was born in Newcastle, but I was only there for a couple of years. Then um, my stepfather was with the Royal Navy. So that was the reason that we moved. And I actually grew up in the South. Devon. Well, here in in the United States, when you hear of the Royal Navy, it's very prestigious. It, it's always always very regal. When when I see it in the movies portrayed, uh, being in the Royal Navy is a a wonderful thing. How how was he as a as a a dad growing up? Oh, he used to go away for months at a time, which was really sad. Cause me and my brothers, we missed him obviously, um, but we always had that stability. Uh, he always, you know, taught us right from wrong, and both my parents, fantastic role role models, absolutely fantastic. And my mother, especially, she's aware of everything that I do online, and she's one of my biggest supporters with it all. She always tells me how proud she is. So yeah, my parents are fantastic. I'm really lucky with them as well. It's nice to have a, a mother and a father that that are supportive as well. Now, where did you get your fashion sense from? Uh, did you get it from ma- uh, mother or father, or, or did you get it from from someplace else, uh, friends or or whatnot? My fashion sense, I'd say, is more out there than my mother. My mother, she's she's obviously an older generation, so she's like quite hippie, quite pagan. Whereas, I don't know. I just I wear what makes me happy. I look the way that makes me happy. You know, I've tried all different hair colors, different styles. Some days I like to wear glitter in my hair. Some days I don't. Uh, With the tattoos, that's just me. (laughs) I've always had them, you know. I think I was about 18, 17, 18 when I had my first tattoo and I was hooked. I love anything that's out there that's wild and that makes you feel free and individual as well. Really able to express yourself, anything like that. I love it. I like that. I like that a lot. If I can get away with it, I wear glitter in my hair. Sure. 
why wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but and and you do have a style. You you have a, a lot of pictures. Yes, the, some of the uh, quite a few are pr- provocative. And if you care to <laughs> to subscribe, then hey, that that's what you're you're wanting to see. And I, I found that you seem like a, a very interesting person. And I wanted to know more about the sunflower, the person behind the Instagram model. There, I, I put a I put some kind of a title uh, on you, Instagram <laughs> model. Sound right. <laughs> yes, and and. And maybe, maybe beyond that, that's painting a smaller box, but what other interests do you have besides, uh, hanging out on, on, uh, Instagram and, and posting and, and, uh, uh, putting yourself out there for the world to see. Okay. So one of my recent sort of ventures, um, I actually collect taxidermy and <laughs> I, I had to go at taxidermy myself for the very first time. And my dad has a, an aviary in his garden and one of his owls passed away. So he saved the owl for me. He put it straight in the freezer. Uh, <laughs> I got all the utensils together, the borax, everything I needed. And I had a go at taxidermy with an owl. Unfortunately, it did not go as planned. And um, all I have left are the wings. But <laughs> I love anything like you know, sort of out the box antiques as well. My house is full of odd, unusual things. Um, I'm looking at like an old mirror at the moment with one of these vintage advertising pictures on it. I've got a mannequin in the corner. I've got, you know, the jaws from deer hanging in the kitchen. So I love anything that's odd, unique and quirky as well. I love collecting things like that. The flea markets, antique fairs, things like that. They're so interesting. They're exciting. Well, uh, you have, uh, we're on Skype, uh, Sunflower, and you have your video on. I guess I could turn my video on, but my phone is, is flat, so you're going to be watching the ceiling fan. I, I guess I can go off mic a little <laughs> bit and kind of poke my head over there. Hi, how you doing? How's it going over there? Hi. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, for the most part, I have, well, let me see if I can uh, kind of turn it around here. Oh, well. Anyway, I'll... T- <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of hard to, to hold the phone up and, and keep the microphone on. I'm using a handheld mic here and we're uh we're podcasting uh from conway arkansas all the way to i don't even know where you're living now that uh, sunflower birmingham 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 area and that would be in the south of england it's in the midlands oh in the midlands <laughs> yes I, I apologize uh, geography uh, geography hard <laughs> <laughs> So, oh my goodness, maybe maybe I should turn that that uh, video off because I think the the ceiling fan is going to <laughs> hypnotize you there. <laughs> so I, 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 we're, I'm having fun and taxidermy. Oh my goodness, what a, what an endeavor! What what got you into uh, keeping dead animals on your shelf? Uh, uh, was it something that that you did as a, a young person, or or did anyone in your family collect taxidermy? Absolutely so this is no, something that's uh, so recent. It is very recent. I mean, the collections, um, I don't know if this will work, but I will walk around and show you. <laughs> uh, the collections, they were just my idea. I absolutely, I love deer especially. So I've got obviously a few of them on the wall. She's got um, deer heads on the wall. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, with my visits to antique markets, uh, flea markets and things, I find things like this, antlers. Antlers um, on the wall. <laughs> they are bargains. I love, you know, anything like that everywhere. I've got a lovely little Globe drinks cabinet. That was actually a gift from my work colleagues because they all know me very well. They know that I like to collect these sorts of things. And so, yeah, like I say, um, there's a jaw here. just hanging in the living room. There's a jaw <laughs> just hanging, hanging on a string just in the middle of the living room. And, and you, I saw the globe. The globe is beautiful. I, I'm, I'm, see, I, I just mentioned that I don't know geography very well, but I do like globes and maps. <laughs> so it's, it's actually a drinks cabinet, so that's a bonus. Oh, cap- oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a so drinks it's cabinet. Service. All I had left was the wings. That's all I could save from it because, unfortunately, um, being my first time, being a novice, uh, too many mistakes, but I will try again. Hopefully, <laughs> Miss Sunflower from Birmingham, uh, England, uh, or is currently in Birmingham, <laughs> England, uh, from other plates, uh, places, various uh, places around England. Have you ever lived outside of England? 
I've never even been outside of England. <laughs> I've never been on a plane, never been abroad, not yet. Well, hopefully with this uh, modeling endeavor, it'll take you far away places. Uh, let's see, uh, what year did you graduate high school? 2006, I was. She's a youngin. She's a whippersnapper. So uh, I'm guessing you're still, oh. <laughs> what's that? Well, I'm 30 this year, so. Hey, get on a happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, yes, in your 20s, I, I tell people, do all the things you want to do in your 20s, because by the time your 30s come around, you have to, to uh, get settled in and get straightened out. And I, I see you have a nice apartment full full of things that you love and, and you're enjoying your, your taxidermy. Now, have you been collecting the taxidermy? for a while because it seems like that's a very extensive collection the taxidermy perhaps a couple of years now okay. um when when i first sort of got into that stage um after that relationship breakdown and i got my my own place i was like hey i can make this house look as beautiful as, as i want i can put what i want in it so i really felt like i could express my personality in my own home and that's where it started and it's just become an obsession. <laughs> well, that's great. And like yeah, crazy. what do your friends think? What do your friends think about you and your taxidermy when they come over? They hate it. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes it. Now, are are you into movies? That that well, that that leads me to believe. Well, maybe uh, horror movies, or or what kind of movies do you like? Um, it depends who I'm with, really. I'm not one to watch films by myself. I'm more about the music. I will have the radio on any day. Um, Film-wise, I guess if I've got friends around, it's not always a horror, believe it or not. I do like the sort of romantic comedies. And oh. I like, you know, a nice thriller as well, a bit of crime. <laughs> well, that says a lot about you, Sunflower. Even the name Sunflower that you go by, it, it says a lot. You're 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 a lover, not a fighter. Uh, a very romantic person, I suppose. Yes. Oh, she's even shaking her head. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like it. And, and uh, so, okay, you said music. What kind of music do you like then? Oh wow! Again, anything really. It depends what mood I'm in. Um, so last night, um, one of my friends was over and we were listening to Andrea Bocelli Sweet. of all sorts, you know. And uh, yeah, so that's a nice chilled evening. We had a nice bit, you know, he's got a beautiful voice and I love that song he did with Ed Sheeran. But then other days, um, there's a playlist I listen to called Beast Mode. <laughs> and that's when, you know, I really need to get in the zone and get things done. Um on the rare occasion that I go to the gym, very rare occasion, uh, it will be sort of Spanish, you know, Latino music because that gets me moving. No idea about the language. Don't know what they're singing about, <laughs> but at the <it's> music. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. And, and you don't know, you never know what's going to inspire you until you try it. And so beast mode when you're okay, beast mode generally means that you're going to the gym but you say beast mode is when you're doing things what kind of things are you doing when you're in beast mode in beast mode it can be anything that needs to be done so it could be i've got videos or content to record online or it could be i've got dishes to do <laughs> literally anything that you need to get done if you need to be productive everyone needs their own beast mode playlist for all you, the gym, you've got to have it. Yes, for all the gym rats that are listening, when you're in beast mode, you could be doing dishes. Exactly. <laughs> you can get anything done in beast mode. <laughs> all right, Sunflower. We're painting a little a little picture of you, uh, a, a girl about England. And all, all the boys that are listening to, to this podcast are going to be enjoying your, your accent because it's, you know, it, it's fascinating to, to people here in the United States to hear English people. Really? You, yes, you always sound more regal, more educated it's it's instant instantly gives you uh, iq level points just to have an english accent well that won't do me any harm <laughs> <laughs> now when you refer to yourself uh, where you're from is it uh, i'm from the uk i'm british i'm english i'm from england w what what is the preferred uh self description of, of that sunflower so if somebody asks me online where are you from i normally just say i'm from the uk 
because um, I speak to a lot of people worldwide. Not many people in this country. Um, you know, it's people worldwide, and some of them have even asked me, what's the UK or where's the UK? So there's no point in me saying Midlands or Birmingham because they will never get it. Well, yes. What is the UK? I, I know it's the United Kingdom, but that encompasses a lot of different areas. So uh, even you saying the Midlands, let me know, OK, you're from the middle of, of England, the, the island itself. But the uh, the UK, what does that encompass? So the UK, um, you've got England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. So we are all the United Kingdom is a very small island. Um, Ireland, as I call it, is that bit across the water, which is a little bit separate. And you've got Ireland, you've got North Ireland. That's where it gets complicated. Um, technically, you know, Scotland, Wales, Ireland are different countries from England. However, we're all part of the United Kingdom. So that will be confusing. So, yeah, the Midlands. That will be confusing for the, someone who cannot recognize your accent or where you're from. If you say you're from the UK, they might think Ireland or Scotland. And you said it was complicated in Northern Ireland. What? How so? Um, well, Northern Ireland is <laughs> they sort of split from the rest of Ireland. So the rest of Ireland is not part of the United Kingdom. That's all down to like the politics and the history behind it. I'm not a history buff. I've never been to Ireland in my life, so I don't know the specifics, which sounds awful. Living in the United Kingdom, I really should know these things. But, you know, it's it's something I've never really had to look into, so. Well, as small as the islands look on a map, it's still a lot of area. And I don't know everything about the United States of America. There's things that go on in, in certain parts of the country that I, I wouldn't know what was going on over there. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I, I have no idea what's going on in one from in one part of the country to the other from day to day. So, Sunflower, the Instagram lovely model, the taxidermy collecting the friend having and giggling and laughing and listening to music and romantic comedy loving person that you are oh my goodness so i, I never know where these conversations are going to go any other interests that you have in your life sunflower um oh i love partying uh, <laughs> how, how so what will you consider a partying the partying um group of friends or even two people two people will do um you have a few glasses of wine you go out to a pub um because in england we have a pub on every single street that's no exaggeration there are thousands <laughs> the pubs close about 11 o'clock and then you go on to a club where we go dancing which is one of my favorite favorite things in the world you know a couple of glasses of wine release the inhibitions and that's it i'm first on the dance floor and if there's a stage wow I'm there. <laughs> That's great. I love dancing. Well, not I, that I'm any good at it. Well, I'm a club DJ myself, and and <laughs> you you mentioned dancing. Uh, one of the first names that I used when I was growing up and first on the radio was dancing Danny G, <laughs> and, and that was mostly <laughs> well in high school I danced, and and when I first got on the radio I was second or third bit banana so they would have me on remote location always doing some kind of dancing or or, or playing with people uh da well dancing in different outfits uh, like in a chicken outfit uh, that i remember that one oh <laughs> it was hot and it was summertime in the chicken outfit just dancing around for the the pleasure okay. at the pleasure of the radio stations <laughs> so uh so dancing and you say clubbing and going out with friends that's a a fun thing to do and you do that often every week I wouldn't say every week, perhaps once a month. Um, obviously, with my day job and my evening job, I've got a lot going on, a hell of a lot going on all the time. But I like to try and get out at least once a month and just to really let my hair down, have some fun and, yeah, just go into the city. You're a hard worker, Miss Love Sunflower 3011. And yes, that's your Instagram handle for the people that want to chase you around and find you and support you on your only only fans. Now, how does how does one get into a, a being an only fan or, or, or is that like a Patreon type of thing or how do you make money doing that? So OnlyFans is very similar to a social media platform, like, for instance, Facebook, very similar. 
However, your page, people have to pay to subscribe to it to view your posts. And once they've done that, they'll be able to see all of your videos, your photos, anything that you put on there. But what OnlyFans does as well for the person that's posting, there are no rules about nudity or anything that's explicit. So you make a website like that, the first thing everyone does is post explicit and nude photos. So, <laughs> so yeah, on there, I have um, all 18 plus explicit videos, photos, um, you can direct message on there, like any other social media platform, just without all the rules. Well, that sounds exciting. And if it's what you want to do, that is a fantastic. I, I believe that anyone should be able to do what they want to do, especially. You, and it's nice that your your mom uh, supports you and she, she likes that as you are a beautiful person and you're showing that to the world. And if uh, if people want to pay to see that, hey. It, more power to you, Miss Love Sunflower 3011. Uh, I appreciate you so much. So, you know, If it brings yes. a little bit of happiness to someone else as well, because with the direct messages on there, I answer every single message that I get. And sometimes all someone needs is a bit of conversation, which perhaps they might find difficult to get, you know, in their own lives. So just a bit of conversation, if that makes someone smile and it helps me out, it's mutually beneficial. It's all good. Yeah, I, I try to say say hello to to everyone as they go by, and and there are a lot of a lot of lonely people on this planet, and you're helping them not to be so lonely with your smiles and your your face and your and your pictures online. So, love sunflower, I appreciate you so much. Is there anything else you want to impart to the people? How do they find out more about you? And um, the best thing to do is follow my Instagram, my love sunflowers three zero double one, and. Um, Anyone is welcome to drop me a direct message on there because, as I say, I reply to every single message that I get on there. Um, and if anyone else is thinking, you know, they want to do this sort of thing, they want to make their OnlyFans account or on any other platform if they want to go public, you know, with explicit videos, if that's what makes them feel confident and makes them feel good, then go for it. Don't worry about what people are going to think. You know, I at first was worried, will my family approve? Will my friends mock me? But people will shock you. They will support you. And if they don't, they're not worth your time of day. That is correct. That is correct. Just don't don't uh, don't uh, be with anyone that doesn't want to be with you. And and I guess you learned that in your uh, field, uh, the, the previous relationship that got you started on this path to to bubbliness, to openness, to happiness. Yeah, that so one precisely. what go ahead precisely that i mean i spent long enough not being appreciated for who i am and i don't think anyone should be stuck in that sense of worthlessness where you can't express yourself and be confident i wish everyone could feel that way and i would encourage anybody that wants to express themselves be it in the sexual way online or if they, you know, want to get a crazy tattoo, they want a mad collection of taxidermy to go for it and just be themselves. All right. I'm 50 years old, full disclosure, and I've wanted to have a yin yang uh, tattoo stuck to the middle of my back since probably I was 17. I never got the courage to do it. I still haven't got the courage to do it, but I've realized over the years I, I I want this yin yang in the middle of my back, just a small one, maybe five inches uh, or, 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 or smaller. It's in the middle of my back, and I, I, I haven't gotten it. Why not? Why? Why? I, Why haven't you? What's I just haven't. You? I, I haven't. I have never gotten a tattoo, and I'm so fascinated by tattoos. And I, I noticed you have some. What do they mean? The ink usually means something to people. <laughs> well, um, some of mine mean something. Some of them don't. So the uh, best one would probably be the sunflower. For obvious reasons i have on my lower back um that's just i love that started because i love sunflowers they're my favorite flower they're beautiful they lean towards the light the same as people should i absolutely adore them um i've got my name tattooed in my mouth um what that was that just seemed like a good idea at the time <laughs> <laughs> the things crazy kids do <laughs> in case you forget your name you put it right there like a license plate exactly Exactly. I mean, I've got a piece of broccoli tattooed on my ribs um, because I really like broccoli. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're making me laugh on that one. 
<laughs> and various others. I mean, some of them, you know, perhaps I may have been intoxicated whilst having them. Not the best idea. But I don't regret any of them because it just reminds me of how much fun I had in my youth. Now, did you get any tattoos with friends uh, that matched, maybe? I did, actually. Did. Um, I have a pineapple under my piece of broccoli. <laughs> my friend has the same pineapple, um, but hers has the pair of sunglasses on, on one of her bum cheeks. And with another friend, um, I have a bow on my hip, and funnily enough, her bow is on her bum cheek. <laughs> so there's, yeah, I do have a few matching ones. Well, it's good to have friends and uh, the the crazy things that you do with your friends. <laughs> that's, that's I, I suppose that's a fun yeah, activity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, t- uh, t- okay. <laughs> I'm starting to derail <laughs> myself because I'm I'm laughing. I'm giddy. I'm I'm having a good time here with the love sunflower. And I like the way you said it. I say I'm saying love sunflower thirty eleven, and you said three zero double one. That was a great way to say it. Do you know why it's three zero double one? That's my birthday, thirtieth oh. November. Nice and easy to remember. That's right. That's right. Okay. And thirty days has no, no thirty one days. Wait, how many days <laughs> is in, in November? Thirty. So you were born on the last day of November. That's beautiful. See, and, and this is in case you forget your birthday, I suppose. <laughs> Exactly. It's very handy and it will remind all of my fans as well on the website, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what should they get you on, on this birthday uh, that you're thinking about right now? What, what, what present would you like to have, Love Sunflower 3011? <laughs> oh, anything taxidermy-wise. Yeah, bring me a dead pigeon. I'm happy. <laughs> Wait, a uh, taxidermy dead pigeon or just a dead pigeon that they found in the lawn? <laughs> Well, if it's still fresh, just a dead one they found on the lawn will do. <laughs> now, are, you're actually getting into the taxidermy. What, what kind of chemicals do you need to, to make a taxidermy? I, I noticed you said that you put the bird in the freezer, and then when you pulled it out of the freezer, what did you have to do to it, Sunflower? So after it's been in the freezer, I left it on the side under like a, a cake tin cover just to defrost for 24 hours, make sure it was nice and soft. Um then I had a couple of scalpels, which you buy online from anywhere, really easy to find. And I actually looked at YouTube tutorials to try and see the right way to do it. And not to get too graphic, um, you start on the chest, cut it down. I don't know if this goes for all taxidermy, but this was what I watched for birds. And you literally have to peel the skin off. So it's not as gory as people think. You're not cutting out lungs or hearts or anything like that. To me, it looked like uh, a chicken that we put in the oven so you're just like peeling off the skin and I use a chemical called borax and you just literally sprinkle it on there and you know hope for the best <laughs> and the borax what what kind of chemical reaction does it do does it harden the skin or, or what does it do um, it just preserves it so I know borax has been used in other countries as an additive in food but from what I could gather from a little bit of research, it's not legal to use it as a preservative in food in Europe. That's all I've gathered from that. Um, but it preserves the skin. So it dries it out. It stops it, you know, from having anything rotting on there. But you do need to scrape away any of the fat or the tissue that's left anyway. Um, the most difficult part was pulling out the head. And that's where I went wrong. <laughs> okay. So, for anyone that doesn't know, beaks are attached to the, the bird's skull. And, of course, I didn't take this into account whilst I'm trying to pull this poor owl's head, you know, from, you know, inside its skin. And then I've got the beak just ripping through the skin. So I didn't think that one through. Oh, sunflower. Well, we, we fail so we can get up and succeed. And I'm sure the next one will be so much better because you have this experience. Uh, there, there are no failures, only learning experiences. Well, if someone brings me a pigeon off their lawn, then who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing it. Uh, perhaps you'll you'll have another Instagram page devoted to your taxidermy and other interests. Absolutely. Do you know, I've met, well, I say I've met, I've spoken to some people online that are into taxidermy, and it's always fascinating to talk to them. And I, I'm on a Facebook group, the UK Taxidermy Buy and Sell, and some of the work they do is absolutely incredible. I mean, how they can get these animals to look just so lifelike, so perfect. It's, it really is a skill and an art, and I admire it. 
you know, people have that talent. It's incredible. Well, Sunflower, can people find you on Facebook? Because uh, some people don't use Instagram or is this is Instagram the only way? Instagram at the moment is my only way to find me. Um, the Facebook is a work in progress. So there will be a Facebook eventually. Ooh, stay tuned for that. <laughs> You'll find Sunflower <laughs> worldwide. Uh, right now, she's speaking to uh, just a, a random guy in the middle of Conway, Arkansas. You know, I'm from Miami, Florida, which was a, a, a bigger uh, city. But uh, I moved to a, a smaller town, which is only 50,000 people. But, hey, it se- seems like a smaller town than Miami who had that had over a million <laughs> probably on my block. Now, how, how big of a town is uh Let's see. Where were you? Some shire? <laughs> <laughs> Near Birmingham. So Birmingham is the second largest city in the UK, London obviously being the capital. Birmingham is the second biggest. And I live just outside of Birmingham, about 10 miles south of it. And the exact town that I live in, it, it's not quiet. It's not a hustling city. It's just what I would call a normal town for England. But it's a nice way to get away from places. But when you go out dancing, I guess you go to Birmingham? Um, either Birmingham, Wolverhampton. Um, I mean, there's there's a club two minutes up the road from me if I do want to stay local anyway. And then I can just roll home, literally roll down the hill home. So. <laughs> There was a club, there was a pub on almost every street in this country. Yeah. And I can fully understand why, you know, people, especially from around the world, you know, there's this stereotype Britain has a binge drinking culture. And I totally understand that because there are so many places and, you know, the alcohol age is 18 as well, which I think is lower than America. Quite. Uh, 21 seems to be the la- the legal age for most of the country. Yeah, so our limit is 18, so a lot more accessible. I mean, at one point, smoking, the age restriction was 16. Um, They changed that to 18 a few years ago. It's quite a while ago now. But, I mean, it's, yeah, alcohol, binge drinking culture here is out of hand, especially for younger people as well. I can remember being a teenager, and I was a complete tear away, my poor parents. (laughs) Um, You know, I, I remember drinking underage a lot of teenagers here do it because it's so accessible um but i'm going on a tangent here anyway no we have time (laughs) that's what podcasts are is to to get your views on things and and you yes i've heard of the pubs uh and it's often uh referred to in a in a very romantic a very quaint way i'm going to england and i'm going to go visit a pub and i think that's a wonderful thing but you say there's pubs on every corner and i think there's probably coffee shops on every corner particularly one brand of coffee a starbucks coffee shop on every corner here in the uk in the uh, united states and mm, i would say fast food is probably what, what would be your stereotype of the united states um <laughs> fast food would be the first thing that comes to mind baseball for some reason as well um and you know the first thing that comes into my head when i think of america at the moment obviously donald trump and the simpsons <laughs> Ooh, you touched on a very polarizing thing what do you what do you think about donald trump oh i don't think i'm educated in politics enough to have a valid opinion about donald trump however from what the media has portrayed over here I don't think I would have voted for him. (laughs) However, as I say, (laughs) I'm not educated in especially U.S. politics enough to have a comment or an opinion on Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, Yeah. He's he's not been portrayed very well over here. Okay. Well, that's painting a picture of of how how he's portrayed. I mean, he's a. He's he's the president, and we have to uh, abide by him. That's uh, that's that's uh, pretty much all I, I can do. And, and I don't mind talking politics. And in fact, there there's uh, a few politics in, in in, and I'm not educated either. I I hardly uh, even vote unless I find a candidate that's that's really worth my while. And and this time, I, I didn't find any any candidates that uh, really. Uh, made me feel like oh I needed to get up out of my chair and go go vote, but uh, how how are how are things in England uh, p- politically and uh, with how's Brexit going? I, I've I've heard things, but it kind of died down <laughs> over here. 
<laughs> I knew you were going to ask about Brexit. Um, we keep delaying it for some reason. As I say, I'm not very much into politics because I don't trust politicians. I don't believe politicians, not just in the UK, in any country. Majority of politicians are overpaid. You know, they don't take responsibility for their actions. And I find a lot of them don't tell the truth. They might not directly lie, but they bend the truth and they have a way with words so that they can say exactly what you want to hear without actually making any solid commitments. And yeah, with Brexit, I don't, I can see how it will affect things day to day for some people, but I'm not taking it on a personal level to myself because I don't see any direct effect that it's going to have on my life. And I think a lot of people are like me, ill-educated about politics because it's not something that is taught enough in the syllabus in our schools. You know, things like history and politics, taxes, law, all these sort of things. If we covered them more in school and colleges, then, you know, our country might have half a shot. But unfortunately, you know, these are not the things that we get taught in school properly. And I mean, going on to like the politics of the the education system is a whole other thing. But yeah, I have my own opinions about schools, <laughs> especially the education system in this country. It's it's underfunded and it's not as it should be. <laughs> I like that uh, sunflower. And one thing that struck me uh, about what you said, it was uh, a lot of people are like you and yes, I am just like you. I, I find that, that people on the, on the right or the left politically, uh, if you just talk to them, you find that, that, they're pretty much they have the same goals they're just coming at it from different directions people want their children uh, to be healthy and and a roof over their heads and food in their and uh, on the table and that you know the, I, if you just spoke to people and, and just really and you know don't believe the media too much and and but just ah oh, yes if everybody could just get along and just love each other and uh and take a look at uh sunflower 3011 on their on our instagram <laughs> exactly and that'll make you happy a lot of people. <laughs> but yes yeah if, All only right. the world, if only the world were that simple and if everyone could get along but you know the harsh reality is that's never going to happen be it in politics you know debating education systems voting religion anything people aren't always going to get along but I think, you know, some of these politicians in any country, they make it worse by making these false promises and, you know, not following through with their commitments and the reasons that they're elected. So a lot of, you know, the sort of uproar, especially with this Brexit business, a lot of it, you know, it's just people are not educated enough and they're being lied to. They feel like, you know, they vote for these people and they just don't come true for them. So whilst a lot of us here aren't 100% clear on what's happening with politics you know we're still angry about it I get it I get it it's a it's a sticky situation and and I hope I hope that that one of those statements comes uh, comes to ring not true I hope that we do one day get along well it might not be in my lifetime or your lifetime but oh I, I have to believe that that somewhere down the line, people are going to get it together because if we plan to go to any other planets, we have to get it together here on this planet, I think. See, I, as much as I would love to agree with you on that, I just don't see it ever happening. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. What I think, perhaps, you know, in future generations, if people could get to that level or that maturity where we can get along and accept that each person has different opinions, for instance, um, I might not get along with one of my neighbours, but we should at least have the decency to be civil to each other and not cause any trouble, not cause any bad feeling. We see each other in the street, we say hello, the same as people in the world should do, no matter what religion or what you believe in or if you disagree with someone's opinions on whoever's you know, president or prime minister. You should accept that everyone is entitled to their opinion but still be civil and be kind to each other. There's no reason for so much bad feeling and so much hatred. And a lot of it, I think as well, of any bad feeling from any situation, some of it is the way, you know, not necessarily their parents' fault, but, you know, perhaps society's input, the way the surroundings they've been in, the way they've been raised, environmental factors. There are so many things that can affect a person's judgment and point of view. 
and as I said before, my mother is a wonderful woman. She is so open-minded and she is the last person to judge anybody. So I'm really lucky that she's brought me up with the opinion of the, the same where I won't judge anybody. I can disagree with their opinions and I know my own mind, but I would never, I would never say to someone, you know, you are wrong. You can't have an opinion. I'm very lucky like that. You know, I've been raised in the way to accept everybody and, you know, it'd be nice if everyone could get along eventually. I like the way you think sunflower, just have conversations. The, the, one of the reasons that I started this podcast, what makes you famous is, is so I can have conversations with people, people on the streets, even if they're, they're having dinner together. I find that they're, they're on their phones. They're looking at their social media and not talking to each other. And here I had to uh, make this Skype call all, all the way over to, to England from, from United States. So I can talk so I can have a conversation with sunflower and, I'm learning things about you and how how you think and and maybe you're learning a few things about me and and how I think and it's a that's just what conversations it, 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 people don't don't converse anymore they just what do you, what do you think about people looking at their phones while they're having dinner together? One thing that I've noticed um, with people I know with families I know um, just generally everywhere children are allowed phones children under the age of 10 are allowed phones of internet access and social media and they have facebook they have instagram now my instagram is public what's stopping a 10 year old from clicking on and looking at my provocative photos in theory instagram can put rules saying you know you have to be 13 plus or whatever the age is but surely you know especially children under a certain age should not have access to their own personal phone I can understand access to the internet for purposes of education, like homework, for example. But when I was a child, my friends, this is when mobile phones were just becoming popular. And my parents were like, no, you're not having one just because your friends have one. And I mean, the, argue, the argument is there. There are safety purposes. So children, you know, they go out to play with their friends. They take a phone for safety purposes. However, I mean, as you say, it stops conversations. You know, I know children that will sit at a dinner table and stare at their phone instead of talking to their parents. And in one sense, I can understand the parents' frustration, but in the other sense, I have no sympathy because you've enabled that. You've given that child a tablet, an iPod or whatever they are. Um, you know, you've given them that platform to actually just, you know, totally ignore you and not have a conversation. Do you realize? Yeah, I think, you know. Yeah. You realize, Sorry, Sunflower, that you just got a, a little bit older and a little bit wiser. Uh, the The only thing that you could have <laughs> added to that was back in my day. Back in my day, <laughs> yeah. when I was a young whippersnapper. Yeah. And you are a young whippersnapper in, in comparison to to me. You know, I graduated in 1986, and and uh, and things were a lot different. I, I played outside uh, quite a bit uh, growing up. I I, I got on my uh, on my all terrain vehicle or my bicycle and went outside to play with friends. And that's how you you knew where everyone was meeting up is where the bicycles were. Uh, whose whose house were they in front of? Oh, that's the meetup, not the Facebook group. Uh, how do how were you growing up in, in that in, in your your time? The early years, I was outdoors a lot. I was I had brothers. I'm the only the only girl, so I was a bit of a tomboy. Um, I had a bicycle, and I was always outdoors. And I mean, at that time, we would just disappear for the entire day as long as we were back by dark. Um, we could disappear for the entire day. We, my parents, you know, they would know that we were down the park playing or that we were safe because we wouldn't go too far. But I think especially with the, the ways that members of the public can contact people on social media these days, you get things like online grooming. And there's just there's too much access. And I can understand parents don't want their children to go too far these days. They Rather, they stay inside because it's safer. But, you know, at the same time, I don't think they're realising you know, the access that certain people have online, if they're giving their children these this internet access, they, you know, they can reach out to them and they need to be careful of this. But, you know, I, I totally understand times change. So parents don't feel comfortable saying to their kids, go out and play all day. I totally understand that. But 
at the same time, you know, you can't wrap them in cotton wool. They have to go out and experience the world. My mum always said to me, never, ever be afraid to travel and leave. You know, she's very much, you know, go be independent, spread your wings and go. So, yeah, it's, yeah, I, I, I had a happy childhood. I was quiet. I was shy. But I was, for the most part, quite content with going out and playing in the mud chucking worms at my brothers and i used to collect insects in jars oh. so perhaps <laughs> Tur- taxidermy perhaps that, yeah, yeah that had something to do with that maybe so oh yeah i had a good childhood overall i was very lucky i think there were people that were a lot better off but there were also people a lot worse off i think and you're surprising yourself sunflower you're finding out things about your childhood that are leading yeah. you to things that <laughs> happen now oh yeah i did do that when i was younger yeah, that was a surprise, actually, considering, you know, thinking about that. I can remember keeping insects in a jar and trying to chop up a piece of banana to feed to, like, a woodlouse. And why on earth I would do that, I have no idea, but <laughs> I think you do as a child. Sounds like a fun thing to do to me, <laughs> Sunflower. The, the Love Sunflower <laughs> 3011. Now you remember her birthday, <laughs> and everyone should remember her birthday. Uh, so fascinating to talk to you uh, i'm enjoying just speaking to you about wow just things whatever's on your mind this is your podcast and wow well, i've taken some of your time uh, uh, what do you what else do you have to do for the rest of the evening that's okay i mean for the rest of the evening there's not much left of it um what I'm time is it over there some dinner Ooh, let's have a look so it's 20 past nine at night Oh, okay. Yeah, we started this a little bit late. It's uh, it's only mm, three twenty in the afternoon. So, t- I guess uh, you would say twenty past three. Twenty past three. So yeah, I'm just going to cook some dinner, have a lovely hot bubble bath, and head to bed. Ah. I, I literally during the week I don't have anything wild planned. I do what I need to do. I do my work, be it day job, night job. Um, my house is clean and tidy. I go to bed. <laughs> I'm a very straightforward person. So no fe- photo sessions tonight? Who's taking the photos? Do you know what? It's completely solo. People don't believe me when I, I say, yeah, I took that photo myself. Um, for instance, photos from behind, um, they can be very difficult to get the right angle. <laughs> and I always say to people, I've pulled a muscle taking that, so goddamn appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's very easy to do you know you set a timer on your phone on your camera whatever you're using prop it up against a pillow at the right height and just hope for the best <laughs> it's hard work sunflower it's hard work <laughs> and i appreciate it thank you so much uh, uh for chit-chatting with me and uh, maybe we'll do it again in the future uh, any last words you want to give to the people do you know what the last word Let's not talk about myself, everyone else. Just be confident. And if you want to go out and post provocative photos of yourself, if you want to get that crazy tattoo, like the yin yang on your back, then go and do it before it's too late because life is shorter than you you would ever think. I appreciate that, Sunflower. Go enjoy your dinner and your bubble bath. And then it's off to, to night night and have sweet dreams. Well, thank you ever so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Bye for now, Miss Sunflower. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs> Well, there you have it, party people. Love, Sunflower. Wait, what, how'd she say it? Three zero double one. <laughs> Remember her birthday, November 11th, uh, uh, November 30th. Oh, I'm so bad. Remember her birthday, November 30th. And get her some taxidermy. I never know where these conversations are going to go. I, I think in, in the beginning, I'm, I'm going to speak to a, an Instagram model and find out what modeling is about. And yes, we went over that a little bit. But I, I like to find out what other interests are. And she had a good upbringing. Dad's in the Royal Navy and, and mom it, just bringing her up right, treating, uh, teaching her the, the good things that she needs to be taught and supporting her in her modeling endeavors. And then taxidermy. And we talked a little bit about Brexit. Uh, she was like, I knew you were going to talk about that. <laughs> I'm, wow am i that predictable well that's the biggest thing that that we hear about over here in the united states about what's going on in in the uk in england in the british isles and uh, yeah I, I, we heard a, a lot about brexit when it first got voted on but we didn't hear it, it, we it kind of died down in the news around here at least 
in, in my views and i find i find my news on twitter and facebook and and various social medias um you know various news newspapers that are online and and yes i'm not hearing a lot about brexit so and i'm not that much into politics either <laughs> and and i guess there there's not a, a pretty picture of of our president over in in the in the uk as well he's he's making a a splash if you will and not a good one <laughs> so it's very polarizing so your your views on on uh, what things are going on politically if even if they differ from mine or miss sunflowers i encourage you give somebody a chit chat you know if you're if your political views differ from someone else's don't don't fight uh, you know don't don't do a a knockdown dragged you know fisticuffs fight give a chit chat you'll find that people are people <laughs> no matter what they, they 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 want the same things they they want you know a nice a nice life for themselves and their families for the most part and yes there are there are those those chosen few that uh, get a little crazier than others but uh, you know and i i say crazy that's not a that's not my diagnosis <laughs> that not my medical diagnosis i have no qualifications to say whether someone's crazy or not i i do uh, just I, I i like to live my life and take care of my family and and i hope that you do too well wow <laughs> <laughs> that went a little deep at the end. <laughs> if you're still listening, thank you so much. Uh, love Sunflower 30 double one. I appreciate that. Appreciate you chit chatting with me and having a talk on the What Makes You Famous podcast. If you want to tell your story, I encourage you. Give me a call at 501 470 6386 or email info at radio what.com. That's it for me. That's it for this edition. Stay tuned. More conversations to come on the What Makes You Famous podcast. It's Keys Dan, RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. Radio What, the music you want. Hey, guys, this is Shelly G with a fast fact. In May 1997, Paul McCartney broke his own world record by obtaining his 81st gold disc. Do you have a fast fact? Share it with us at Interactive Radio, radio radiowhat.com. Follow Keys Dan on Facebook and Twitter. Click on the links at the top of keysdan.com. Follow Radio What on Facebook and Twitter. Click on the links at the top of radiowhat.com. The music you want is on.